last hour of the agony of sin, reminding us of the consequences of sin. I think of the word agony, I think of the wide world of sports uh, program that came on years ago, and the intro uh, had the phrase, the uh, thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And the agony of defeat was accompanied by a clip of a skier about to jump off a ski jump and he fell off the ramp. And I'm sure that was agonizing in more ways than one. But sin certainly is also agonizing in more ways than one. And so we appreciate that lesson. Thanks for those able to join us in our in-person services here and those who may be able to join us by way of Facebook Live or later or YouTube channel or uh, whatever medium. But all we th give thanks to God that he has not given up on us even though we at times mistreat him, reject him, and ignore him, he has not given up on us. In fact, in mercy, he gave us a plan whereby we can be saved, and it behooves us then to act upon that plan. Faith in Jesus is no, never misplaced faith. We may place our faith and confidence in people. They may let us down. That's misplaced faith. But faith in Jesus is never misplaced, never wrong. Without faith, we cannot please God. We want to repent of our sins, confessing our Lord, and then being immersed in water that our sins might be washed away, and then walking in newness of life. Whenever we stumble as Christians, we have the avenue of repentance and prayer, and God forgives us once again. Thank God he has not given up on us when we so often have given up on him. Now we captured this morning's lesson, an example worth following, and we want to begin by concentrating on our terms. First of all, this word example, if we were to look in an English dictionary, we might get a definition of something like this. An example is something, or you might say someone, worthy of imitation or a model. There are those who would say that our title is a bit redundant. After all, if something is an example, it's automatically worth following. You don't need to add worth following after the word example. But sometimes we are redundant to provide emphasis. On one occasion, Jesus said, lift up your eyes. Well, there's no need to say up after lift, because if something is lifted, it's automatically going up. But lift up your eyes for emphasis sake, the redundancy there. Also, we would add there are different definitions to the word example other, other than this one. One other definition of example is a thing characteristic of its kind. Theft is an example of crime. Not example in the sense of something we need to imitate or follow, but characteristic of a type of crime. But for purposes of our study, we're talking about people setting a proper example and being a model to imitate. Well, we talked about the English word example. Let's think about the Bible word for example. And Brother Jameson pointed this out to us in our recent gospel meeting in his series of lessons on 1 Peter. And the idea that the Bible word for example literally meant underwriting. If you were to look at the Greek word and break it down into two parts, you have the idea of writing under or under writing. The word was often used to describe the practice of writing at the top of a page. So children learning to write, as we would say their ABCs, would then write under the copy and imitate that which was written. Now I know that I'm dating myself by this picture and I'd give anything if I had an old blue horse tablet. But some of us can remember this for first and second grades, these old blue horse pencil tablets. And you cut out the blue horse that was on the front of the tablet and you could redeem those for prizes if you had enough of them. How many of you remember the blue horse tablets? Some are not ashamed to be honest. <laughs> and some evidently are. The blue horse tablets and uh, this again is just an old, uh, old, old uh, photo of, of, of actually one, and you've got the perfect letters there on the front, and the idea was to take your pencil and then try your best to make a perfect A and a perfect B. 
We've come a long way, folks, from the blue horse tablet and the, and the great big fat pencils and the cigar boxes we put our crayons in. That was the day, that was a lie. But now we have this. This is an example of, I think, what's called a write and wipe, or wipe and write. Sort of sounds vulgar, doesn't it? <laughs> but you write and then you just wipe it off and start all over. You've got an example of the perfect letter on the top line. The second line, you have a dotted A, and the child traces the dotted A. And then the third line, well, that's where you freehand it. And whoever did this did a fairly good job of making the capital A there on the free uh, on the freehand part. Underwriting, that's all the word literally meant. You've got a perfect, perfect example at the top. Your job as best as you could, learning to write your ABCs, your job was to do your best in copying the perfect, perfect example. And so the Bible concept of example means a copy, a pattern for imitation of our lives. As kids trace the letters, trying to imitate the perfect, we have those that we try to trace our lives, trying to imitate those who are better than us, that we might be better ourselves. The Bible emphasizes the importance of being or following good examples. Paul said to the Corinthians, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Paul said to the Philippians, brethren, join in following my example. Philippians 3, 17. And then Hebrews 13, 7. Whose faith follow? Those who have the rule over you, whose faith follow? Follow their lead. Follow their example is the idea. So the Bible emphasizes both are, first of all, imitating those who are good examples but secondly the flip side of that the bible also stresses the importance of our being a good example ourselves like paul said to timothy timothy let no man despise your youth but you be an example yes you want to follow those who are good examples but timothy you yourself ought to be a good example of the believers in word and conduct and love in spirit and faith and in purity so we are, yes, to follow good role models, but at the same by the same token, we are to be good role models ourselves. This is a very simple study, and we're going to outline it asking these three questions. As we think about an example worth following, number one, who is my example? Who am I following? But second, whose example am I? To whom am I setting an example? And then third, what kind of example am I? So first of all, we ask the question, who is my example? Who is my example? And we're just gonna give some suggestions here as to who our examples, to, to whom our example should be. Is my example, first of all, Jesus? He's at the top of the list. His life lived perfect in every way. If we need a model to follow, and we all do, then Jesus is prime example number one. In fact, Jesus was the example for the Apostle Paul. Consider again his words. Corinthians, I want you to follow me even as I also follow Christ, even as I also am of Christ. We get the word mimic from the word follow from that verse. You may have a translation that says imitate imitate me even as I also imitate Christ or mimic Christ. We all grew up playing the game follow the leader and somebody was picked out as leader of the group and whatever he did, you did to the best of your ability. If he walked along, then you were to walk the law and you get the idea. We remember that. Well, that's the exam. That's the, uh, the idea behind this. I want you to follow my lead simply because Paul says, I'm following the lead of Christ. Jesus Christ is the perfect example for us. We would say in every aspect of life, but that wouldn't be exactly true. The Bible tells us to confess our sins. Now we don't follow Jesus there because he never sinned. He never had any sins to confess. But with but that exception, he would be our example in every other area of life. We sing the song, He the Great Example Is and Pattern for Me. He is the perfect, flawless, 
blueprint, if you will, for our lives. Peter says that we should follow his steps. He left us an example, 1 Peter 2, 21. Here's the passage that James had emphasized in the meeting. He left us an example that we should follow his steps. The life of Jesus is a unique life among the many billions who have or ever will live or are living now. His unique in every respect of untold billions, none like his life. Jesus' life is talked about. Jesus' life is sung about. It's great to do that. But not only ought we to sing about and talk about his life, we ought to follow his life. We ought to follow his lead. Hopefully when people look at us as Christians, they can see Jesus reflected in our lives because we are following his example. So Jesus is our example on how we ought to please each other. We don't have the time to look up all these passages, but Romans 15, 1 to 3. We are to please one another as Christ did the same. He's our example as, as to how we are to love one another. We are to, to love one another as Christ has loved us. Walk in love as Christ has loved us. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. He's our example on how we are to look out for each other. Let this mind be in your mind, the mind of Christ. He being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a man, made him a, a servant, made him a likeness of man, and gave his life for us. Again, the point is, he's our example as to how we are to look out for others. And certainly, as Peter says, he's our example on how to suffer patiently whenever we are mistreated. When he was reviled, again, as we, we read he, was, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. He just gave the matter over to God. Anybody can fight back. Anybody can get even. Most everybody does that. Jesus sets an example as to how we're to react whenever we are mistreated. Like he, we are to suffer or we are to suffer patiently. He sets the example. Can't find a better example than Jesus. We'll never go wrong if you follow his lead. Who's my example? Second, is it Paul? Is it people like Paul? Paul, again, encouraged the Corinthians to follow his example. Follow me as I follow Christ, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. He's not being self-righteous. He's not bragging. He's simply encouraging them to follow his Christ-like lead. Jesus urged the Philippians join in following my example and note not just me but those who so walk as you have us for a blueprint a pattern a pattern for life we recall that when, G, when paul stood before king agrippa king agrippa said paul you know what you almost persuade me to be a christian note paul's response back to agrippa paul said agrippa i would to god that not only you but also all who hear me today might become not just almost, but altogether such as I am, except for the chains that bind me. Paul is saying a mouthful there. Agrippa, I wish that you and everybody in the audience might be just like I am. That's something to say, isn't it? wonder if we could say that. I would like for you folks to be exactly like I am. Again, not bragging or boasting. Here's a man simply following the lead of Christ. And he can say that. Paul praised and encouraged the Thessalonians by saying, You became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. So again, the question is, who is my example? Number one, at the top, it needs to be Jesus. And second, it could be great men like Paul and others as they follow the Lord. But what about some modern day in the flesh examples of examples to follow? What about other Christians? Do they serve as a pattern for my life? Not a perfect, we're not saying that. Only the Lord was the perfect example, but nonetheless, there are faithful people who have lived and are living that are living Christ-like lives. Again, as Paul said to the Philippians, Follower, be followers together of me 
and mark them which so walk as you have us for an example. Sometimes in the, the Bible I've highlighted the word mark. Sometimes in the Bible the word mark means mark and avoid, used negatively. False teachers were to be marked, noted, know who they are, and withdraw from them. Don't associate with them. Mark them and avoid them. But here the word mark is used positively. Mark and imitate is the idea behind this. Mark and imitate, consider them a pattern, a pattern follow. Now, if we have the time this morning, we could give in our own lives, I'm sure if we've lived long enough, a number of Christians that heavily influenced us at an early age. We might not be who we are today. We might not be Christians today. We're not for the influence and the example that these Christians set for us in our lives. We could talk about dads and moms. We could talk about relatives. We could talk about Sunday school teachers. I think about Sunday school teachers. I think about growing up in the church in Sharon, Tennessee. And I know I've, I've mentioned her before, but I think about Joe Connell's mother. Mary Lou Connell was our third grade teacher. And uh, I think about uh, a teacher who was patient with us. We were rather mischievous on Wednesday evenings. And she had a, a room full of third graders who didn't always act as they ought to have acted. And yet she was so calm. And she was so patient and understanding and bent over backwards to try and teach us. And she still to this day stands out in my mind as a great, a great Christian example. We had another teacher who had us of all things for homework for Bible class. You think that homework in school, you know, we think that's awful. She prescribed homework for Bible class. And we were to have that homework done by the following Sunday. She had us memorize chapters of the Bible. But what stuck out in my mind, she never asked us to do something that she wouldn't do herself. And she would come into class the next Sunday and quote the chapter before us that we were supposed to have memorized. Great Bible teachers. Maybe preachers influenced you or elders or neighbors. The question is, whose example are we following? Are we following the example of Jesus? Are we following the examples of great men who lived before, like Paul, who recorded in Scripture? Are we following the examples of other devout Christians today? A good question to ask is, who just who is my example? But second, another good question to ask is, whose example am I? I don't know that we contemplate this question nearly as much as, as we ought to. We often hear of individuals going the wrong way in life because they began associating with the wrong crowd. When they started associating with the wrong crowd, they became part of the problem. They became part of the wrong crowd themselves. We want to be part of the right crowd. If we befriend others, we're welcoming them to wholesome people and activities for whom am I setting an example? I want to follow good examples and therefore follows I need to be a good example to others. So I should be an example to other Christians. I should be striving to be a good role model for those who in Christ. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, those who worship with us, those who look up to us, those who lean on us, those who depend on us, those who we let down whenever we sin and do wrong. They're looking at us and they see that we stumble into sin. We hurt them by the bad example that we're setting. And so we need to be mindful of the example we're setting on others. We don't want to let others down. Again, the church of Thessalonica, you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believed. The church of Christ in Thessalonica became a household name for a great example to all the churches in that part of the world. I mean, their, their faith spread abroad, and they were people that others could rightly imitate. Again, as Paul told Timothy, Timothy, do not let people despise you because you're young. You be an example of the believers. 
Be an example of the believers. It matters how you live, Timothy. It matters how you live. You want to follow good examples, Timothy, but you want to also be a good example. Wonder what kind of influence Timothy would have had, or any preacher or any Christian of day would have, having a cigarette in our mouth, a cold beer in one hand, a Playboy bunny in our lap, and cursing every other word that came out of our mouth. That would be a turnoff real quick. That would be a letdown to anybody trying to do right. That would not be a good example at all. I want to follow those who are good examples, and I want to be a good example myself to other Christians. Secondly, I ought to be an example to children, to children, those who are looking up to those of us who are older, to those who are looking up to their parents. If children ever needed good role models, they certainly need them now in our, in our, in our world in which we live. And so we think about what Jesus said in Matthew 18. The context is talking about children. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, and this leads a young person into sin, serious repercussions, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's awful enough in and of itself, but far worse to lead a young person, or any person for that matter, into, into sin. What are our children being told when we tell them to act one way and then we in turn act another? This old business of don't do as I do, do as I say, really doesn't wash with God and, and with Scripture. Children can see hypocrisy and inconsistency as good as any other. The poet put it this way. He said, It is all in vain to preach the truth to the eager ears of a trusting youth if whenever the lad is standing by, he sees you cheat and he hears you lie. We need to walk the talk, in other words. If we say it, we need, we need to live it. Young people pick up on these things really quickly. They see hypocrisy. You're aware that I enjoy the Andy Griffith show, and I think about this, and I think about the episode where Andy and Barney were trying to sell an old cannon there in the city of Mayberry. I mean, it was absolutely a piece of junk, and somebody offered them money or offered to, uh, offered to take it off their hand if they would pay them to take it off their hand. That's how worthless it was. And Andy began to try to sell the cannon. He began sort of stretching the truth. In other words, he outright lied. He said, that's a cannon that Theodore and Roosevelt took in the battle. And there's his initials on it, you know, TR, but it wasn't any of Roosevelt's initials at all. But Andy had told Opie, who was trying to sell his bicycle, to Howie, you know, Opie, did you tell Howie that your inner tubes are full of patches and there's a broken chain, a link on the chain there, and, and Opie said, I didn't have to tell him that, did I? He said, yeah, if you're going to be honest, if you're going to sell something, you need to be honest. And then here's Andy trying to sell a cannon, and Opie sees that. And Andy tries to squirm his way out of his hypocrisy. You know, houses are houses and box are box, that's another episode, but again, the same point being made, kids can see through that. They see hypocrisy. We want to set a good example to other Christians. We want to set a good example to young people, to children. Certainly, we want to be a good example to the world in general, to the world in general. The world often gauges the value of following Christ by the example that we set. The world often judges the church by the members who make it up. That's a sobering, sobering thought. And as Christians, yes, we need to care what the world out there thinks of us in here. We need, we really need to care. Peter said that we are to have as Christians our conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, well, what they say won't match how you're living. They may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. We need to be mindful of the fact that the world is watching us very closely. They're scrutinizing our every mood, move, and it matters the example that we're setting. 
and sometimes we don't. A man claimed to be a Christian tells of this very thing happening at a time in his life, and bear with me as I read his words. Again, we're talking about setting a good example. As Christians, if we don't set the example before the world, we'll never convert the world. Here's his story. I was sitting at a stoplight this morning. The lady in front of me was going through papers on the seat of her car, and when the light changed to green, she did not obey its command. A green light is a command, not a suggestion. Well, the light turned back to red, and she still had not moved. I began with my windows up, screaming how stupid she was and beating on my steering wheel. My expressions of distress were interrupted by a policeman, gun drawn, tapping on my window. Against my protestations of, you can't arrest me for hollering in my car, he ordered me to the back seat of his. After about two hours in a holding cell, the arresting officer advised me I was free to go. I said, I knew you couldn't arrest me for what I was yelling in my own car. You haven't heard the last of this. The officer replied, I did not arrest you for screaming in your car. I was directly behind you at the light. I saw you screaming and beating your steering wheel, and I said to myself, what a jerk. But there's nothing I can do to him for throwing a fit in his own car. But what got my attention was the cross hanging from your rearview mirror. The bright yellow Choose Life license tag and the Jesus Loves You bumper sticker. And I thought, I mean, with all that Christianity on display, that you must have stolen that car because a Christian would not act the way, the way that you've been acting. One who believes in the cross, one who advertises the love of Jesus, does not act that way. And he said, I learned my lesson. I was not set an example before the world. Who is my example? Whose example am I? And third, what kind of example am I? Number one, does my example, does my life indicate that I am a faithful Christian? That guy behind the wheel we mentioned a moment ago, if that's the only glimpse we had of his life, nobody would ever dream that he was a child of God. Is my example indicative, indicative of a faithful Christian? Second, is my example conducive to church growth? It's been said there are two reasons why people don't obey the gospel. Number one, they either don't know a Christian, they don't know the joys of salvation in Christ. Or number two, they do know a Christian and they're turned off by what they see. Is my example, what do people see in my life? Is my example conducive to church growth? Is my example helping or is it hindering the progress of the church? And then three, is my example worthy of following? Is my example worthy of emulation? Would I want a child to do what I am doing? If not, I probably don't need to be doing it. Would I want a new convert to follow my example? A co-worker, one who works side by side at, by me at the factory, would I want him living the life that I'm living? saying the words that I'm saying, doing the things that I'm doing. And if not, then I probably need to take a close look at the example that I'm setting. Is my example worthy of following? Folks, if I'm going to wear the name Christian, I need to do my best to try to live up to that name. And if I'm not going to do that, I don't need to be wearing the name Christian because people out there can see whether or not I'm doing my part to live up to that name. An example worth following. Again, we end as we begin. Here's a tablet of sorts, and kids are to trace the letters that are perfect in the hopes of, in the process of doing that, the more you do that, the better you get at making good letters. Whether we realize it or not, People are tracing our lives. They're looking at us closely. Some are actually imitating the very life that we're living. Maybe some habits we've gotten into. Maybe some words we say. Maybe some things we do. There are those watching us, and because we've done something, some feel that gives them the right to do that. They are tracing our lives. How we need to be setting a good, a good example. 
close with these three observations. Number one, we choose whom we follow. We choose whom we follow, and whoever we follow, they inevitably rub off on us. Second, that choice of whom we follow impacts those who follow us because we're in turn going to rub off on them. As the poet wrote, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another standing o'er life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother seeing shall take heart again. We choose who we follow and that choice impacts those who follow in our footsteps, as the poet said. And then number three, the choice reflects what kind of example we are. What kind of example we are, it matters. It makes all the difference in the world. Hate to be there on judgment day and somebody be lost because they followed our example, our bad example. Think about these questions. And this morning, if you need to respond to Jesus, he is the perfect example worthy of our emulation. Respond as we stand and as we sing.